All right, hello and welcome. It is October 29th, the Monday. Uh, I'm joined here by Leslie Armstrong. Hello. We, we are going to be discussing the latest update from the TTC about them allowing us or putting in, in place the infrastructure to use our cell phones. Uh, from what I hear so far, it will only be on the platforms with usage in the tunnels and on the trains to come. Leslie, <laughs> thoughts? When we first talked about this in uh, our weekly meeting, uh, we have a guy on the board by the name of Alex Hum, and uh, he just burst out into laughter because he said, about time. He says, when I was sucking my, th- my thumb in 1993, um, that system was revealed um, in Hong Kong, where he's from. So he, it's been around in Hong Kong since 1993. Yeah, and... Uh why do you think it's taken so long for the the TTC to adopt a system like this? Um, I guess I think the TTC kind of pat itself on the back for a really long time because uh, I think our system is, I mean, it's been around since the 50s, right? So I think because we've had it a long, we've, we've had it around for such a long time, we never really checked on ourselves because we always thought that because it's been around so long, We've already done our work, mm-hmm. you know, and we uh, we give ourselves a lot of allowance to screw up and not actually go forth with more changes. Yeah. Now, do you do you think this is really a wise investment? I mean, according to online sources, which you know, taken with a grain of salt, but I'm you know, these are pretty reliable sources. It'll cost the TTC in and around as near as makes no difference a quarter of a million to implement this uh, this new infrastructure which actually is not that bad considering you know that they're bringing the, uh, the the cell phone service underground now from what I understand they have I think uh, you know about three cell phone providers already lined up for this to go ahead so you know it seems to be that the wheels are you know actually finally moving on this no pun intended uh, but is it too little, too late? Like, should should the TTC really be focusing on on other things? Is this just sort of like a band aid to say, "Oh, hey, look, we have this this awesome technology which you can now use on our subway," but really, it's just sort of masking the fact that it needs more uh, refurbishment? Do you, do you think? Well, what are those cell phone providers? That might be interesting to to find out because if they're the the bigger ones, I think if they're the smaller ones, they're definitely a band aid solution. Mm-hmm. But if they're, you know, the, the bigger ones, then I think that that's an actual uh, real change. Mm-hmm. Well, providers aside, I think we also need to look at the other modification that the TTC has sort of been a little on the slow to to improve. I know one of the big things for me is is I know that uh, for, I, I'm not I've traveled to too many places, but I know for a fact that. In England, they have something called the Oyster Card system, and the Oyster Card system is what we now know as Presto, and they have had that for well, what seems like eons ahead of us. I mean, it's ridiculous that it it should have taken the TTC so long to implement this. I mean, I love it that Go Transit has implemented this, that Mississauga Transit has implemented this, that TTC is now implementing this. I mean, I can pay for all three with the same card. I mean, I can always pay for all three with cash, obviously, but that I can tap on and tap off with all three systems is fantastic. Now, I'd love to see the Presto card system implemented on the TTC buses, because it is already on the GO buses and the Mississauga Transit buses, but TTC needs to do that on the street cars and the buses. What about you? What what can you... I think there's something about Toronto. I've heard from a lot of different sources that Toronto has this problem of anti-regionalism. It's sort of the idea that Toronto doesn't really see itself as a community. Mm -hmm. And so I heard that there was this poll across Canada. Um, They went from province to province. um, And they sort of said, when when you're in your your province, like, do you feel at home? Do you feel like, like, do you you feel proud to say, you know, for example, Mm -hmm. I'm from Alberta or um, I'm from... BC and people across the board, except for Ontario, said, "You know, I am I am proud to say that I am from BC." And and they'll they'll say, they they tell people, you know, I'm from BC. And mm-hmm. and if if you're from Ontario, you won't say I'm from Ontario. You yeah. know, you'll say I'm from Newmarket. I'm from Toronto. I'm from Ottawa. Yeah. 
Yeah. You never say, I'm from Ontario, right? When do you hear people say, I'm from Ontario? Yeah. And I think that's sort of a problem we well, have. Well, I say that, but people, <laughs> people look at me strange. No, they don't actually look at me strange. Um, so I think that is a major problem. And, and I think that affects... Um, that can that can affect everything from uh, including transit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you if you don't have a sense of community, yeah. how can you have something like a se- like a a system of transit which works well if you don't even have community? Exactly. And community is essential because without community, how are we connected? And mm-hmm. and, and in a metaphorical sense, the transit system has to connect us all. Yeah. Well, I know I know New York City is on, on one hand, yes, there are quite a few similarities between New York City, but on the other hand, there are probably a lot more differences, and I was, you're, I'm sure everyone listening to this is familiar with, with memes, uh, I, I try and steer clear of them as much as possible, but of course they crop up once in a while in my life, and actually, I must admit, I did see a funny one not too long ago, and it was a, an overlay, so it had the, the Toronto TTC system, just of the subways, on, on a piece of, on a white background, and then it had the New York subway line laid over top. And I, I don't recall what the comment was underneath, but it was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the TTC had, you know, maybe three or four different lines tossed in here and there, but the New York subway line had more roots on it than an old growth tree. It's It was unbelievable. It was just this huge spider work of, of systems and what do we have? It's funny that happened because, I mean, it's it's almost it's like a, a sort of like a backhanded compliment mm. because to compare Toronto to New York, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that actually speaks volumes because we're trying to be like New York, yeah. and I think the fact that someone compared us to that is they I, they didn't mean it in a good way. Obviously, they're trying to say <laughs> look how pathetic you guys are, but. If we're being compared to New York, I think that means that we're an important city. And mm-hmm. the fact that we're an important city means that we got to get our shit together. Yeah, I agree. Well, I, I think, you know, the final note is, I know the uh, the TTC struck up a uh, contract with Bombardier for the uh, the new subway cars. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious it says Bombardier right on the uh, right on the subway cars. Uh, and don't get me wrong, they're fantastic. I love that you know there's the extra space because you can walk between cars. It's well lit. I will complain that the ceilings are too low. I'm six foot five and I hit my head on everything. I have to duck to get in and out and to walk along the subway cars. It's too small. But that being said, they are very nice. So Woo-hoo. thank you TTC for finally replacing the subway cars. I know you haven't done it to all of them, but thank you for at least starting. It's about time. <laughs> But no, they are they are nice in all honesty, and I'm I'm glad that, you know the TTC is making these modifications. It'll be interesting to see what kind of upgrades the TTC and the city of Toronto gets once uh, once Rob Ford gets uh, a little bit more reassurance from the government. Now that uh, Mr. McGinty has has uh, stepped <laughs> down, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But I do think big changes are coming, and I think. The city of Toronto really needs to step up its maintenance. If we're being compared to New York, it means it's time to put on our big boy pants and start paying for stuff. Start paying for stuff. It's we we need the money. We need to upgrade. It's we're becoming an aged city. So for October 29th, I'm Phil Darlington. Leslie Armstrong. You're listening. You listened to Excalcast. <laughs>